Hi everyone, Jeremy Simon here with 3D Universe. We're going to have some fun today because we just received this brand new FlashForge Creator X from our friends at FlashForge so that we can do an unboxing and getting started video for you. Now 3D printers have gotten a little bit of a bad rep in the media because they're not quite at the point of being push-button appliances. You know, you're not just going to take this out of the box and plug it in and hit go. It takes a little bit more setup than that. But I would say that FlashForge is better than most in terms of that initial setup and I'm going to help you get started with that process in this video. So we have everything we need here to get started, just the box as it arrived and a straight edge razor blade to help cut things open. And uh, that's about all we need for this uh, part of the process. So we're going to go ahead and get started here. Now, we'll publish this video in parts so that you can see just the pieces that you're interested in, starting with the initial hardware setup and then configuring the software exactly as FlashForge recommends using the open source Replicator G software. We're also then going to show some more advanced topics like alternative software packages you might want to consider, which work equally well with this printer, as well as some other more advanced topics like upgrading to the very popular Sailfish firmware or mounting a glass build plate surface to allow working with other types of materials a little bit more easily. So those will all be published as separate videos with links to each of those topics that you can get to what you're interested in. With that said, I think we're ready to begin. Okay, so as you can see, we have a couple of boxes on top with some accessories, which we'll get to in a little while. We're just going to set those aside for now. A little information about their filaments. And then we get down to the printer itself. So we're going to remove some of this extra packaging on the sides. These just slide right out. handles on the side of the printer that you can grip from. I'll turn this around in a moment to give you a better view. All right, so here we have, uh, as you can see, a pretty fully assembled printer. All we need to do is we're going to need to mount the extruder assembly here. Uh, we'll have to remove our two spools of filament and, of course, clean up the uh, materials that are uh, on there for, for shipping. So to get that started, we're just going to clip these zip ties up here and remove the bubble wrap. Same thing over here. Okay. All right, now before we go further, sort of spun things around here to show you a quick look at the back. And what you'll notice, you can't read this probably, but there's a warning label right by the, where the power cable is going to connect in. There's another one up on top here. And those warning labels are reminding us that by default, these printers are set up for European voltage. So uh, if you need this set up for 115 volts uh, for USA, uh, this is something that you need to change before we plug it in and turn it on. Very important. So we're going to flip this around here and I'll show you that. So uh, that is underneath. So I'm going to carefully tilt this backwards. And you're going to see this power supply right down here. And on the uh, front edge, right over here, you probably uh, can't see it too clearly in this view, but there's a red switch that's set on 230, and we're just going to use something pointy to flip that over, which I'm going to grab real quick. Okay, so right in here is a little switch. I'm going to slide that over. Now it says 115, that red switch right where that yellow sticker with the arrow is pointing. So... Once that's done, we are ready to proceed and going to grab my phaser and we'll finish the unpacking process. Quickly going to open up the accessory boxes and just set these aside. So here we have a power cable. 
not going to plug it in yet, so I'll just set that aside. We have a USB device cable, which we will use to connect the printer to our computer. We have a spare cable uh, for one of the uh, cables underneath the printer in case we ever need a replacement. I have never had to replace that myself. And I believe this is for the spool holders and the filament guide tubes. So these spool holders are going to mount on the back, as you'll see shortly. And these are the guide tubes for the filament, which will attach in a short while. Okay, now we are going to proceed with the unpacking here. And this next piece is, is important. This is the extruder assembly here on top. Uh, you want to be careful to lift this out all in one piece. Notice that it is attached, so be careful how you move it with that. I recommend just setting it right down here on top. And we can unpack this. It just flips right open here. And we have first and most importantly our extruder assembly. That is our dual extruder with our fans mounted on the front. Everything ready to go just needs to be mounted onto the printer. Very easy to do. So for now I am going to set this into the little holder. There's a little sticker here that we'll just take off and just set this right in here where we're going to attach it. I'm just going to leave it there for now. As we continue to take this out, we have blue painter's tape, which is a nice inclusion for when you're printing with PLA. This is a, a nice surface to print on. Uh, for ABS, we're going to be using the Kapton tape that is already installed on the printer bed. Uh, by the way, you may see that it looks a little bit like the stuff that comes on, you know, like a remote control or other appliances when you buy them. This is not protective material to be removed. This is Kapton tape, so do not remove that material that's on the print bed. That's what you're going to print on. And uh, you will need to replace it eventually, but it's uh, a little bit of a hassle, so it's best to keep that one in good condition as long as you can. We have a 4 gigabyte SD card, which is going to be holding all of our print jobs. We have a, a sort of accessories kit with uh, spare nuts and bolts, uh, spare fuse. We've got little hex wrenches, uh, all sorts of little extra accessories for uh, uh, as we move forward here. Let's see, I think that's about all we have in this box. So I'm going to set that aside. And uh, next we need to uh, remove, there's a little bit of tape just over on the uh, the, uh, uh, let's see, the motor for the uh, y-axis over here, just to hold it in place. We're going to remove that. And now that can slide freely out of the way. Now we need to remove these uh, boxes of filament. It comes with two spools, and that's what those are down here. So to do that, you're just going to lift this print bed manually. Uh, of course, the printer is not plugged in at this point. However, you may notice as I do this, you're going to grasp it on both sides and lift it straight up. You might notice this display actually flicker a little bit because you get some static electricity and it can actually cause the LCD to go on. But you just lift it up. We're going to go just about up to where that black assembly is, right underneath that. And that should give us enough room to pull those boxes out now. Remove this extra styrofoam. Carefully remove these. Okay, and every printer comes with two spools of filament, random colors. In this case, we've got a nice spool of white. And a very nice blue, very nice. I'm not going to open those now. We have plenty of filament available, but uh, that will be plenty to get you started with your new printer. Okay, so next thing is going to be uh, attaching the extruder assembly. So for that, we want to move this build plate back down, same way, just pushing evenly on both sides. OK, 
Okay, and that gives us plenty of room then to attach this assembly, which is done using two screws. We open our accessories bag here. You're going to find there's a wide assortment, but we are looking for the two shortest screws, uh, which are, I believe, sort of M3 type screws. Okay, so now we're going to mount the extruder assembly. To do that, all we do is set it into this little tray here. It fits right in between the, the grooves in the middle, and then you just center it on the plate by uh, just sort of pushing from each side. Make sure it's centered. That way the holes for the screws will approximately line up. And we're going to go ahead and put our two M3 screws in, one from each side. One of them is right on the left side. You just get the, uh, you, can, you can move the assembly until you feel it going into that hole up above. This feels like it is. And go ahead and screw this all the way in, but not make it too tight. I'm going to keep it somewhat loose while I do the other, sort of like changing a tire. Okay, that seems like it's going in now. now this one we're going to go ahead and tighten all the way. And we want this to be pretty tight. We don't want that extruder assembly moving. Now we're going to go back to the other one, tighten that up. Okay, those are both in nice and tight. Now you'll see the whole extruder assembly can move on the x-axis and the y-axis, but the extruder assembly itself is not going to move from that mounting plate. Now we're going to go ahead and move on to mounting the filament guide tubes and the spool holders. Okay, so now we're going to mount our spool holders. That's these things here, and we're going to just take each one of them, and you'll notice that there are these large nuts on each end. There's one uh, that's going to hold the spool on, and then the end that has two of them is what's going to hold it onto the printer. So we'll take one of those off from the end that has two, and then we'll just put this through from the back and put the nut back on from this side. And it just needs to be finger tightened. You don't need to get out a wrench or anything. You don't want these to be over tightened. And the same thing with the other one. Take off one of these. Put it through the other hole, and then tighten the other nut back on. Okay, those are on snug. Now we'll flip this around, and we'll mount the filament guide tubes. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and attach the filament spools here. I'm just going to use some of my own supply. So this is the uh, Bumat. Red ABS, which uh, I really like, has a nice rich color to it and uh, just mounts right on this spool here. Now, there's a couple things to watch out for when you're mounting your filament. You want to look at the direction that it's coming off the spool. You want it to be coming off on the inside here so that it's lined up for the filament guide tube. So the other spool will be mounted opposite so that it comes, so that they both come in towards the middle. You also want to be sure that you're careful when you're unwinding your filament. They come very nicely spooled. Don't let this go loose and it's because it's going to start to unwind and you might get tangles. That's going to cause failed prints and a lot of frustration. So be sure you keep your filament uh, free of tangles as it comes uh, when it chips. You're going to feed that right into the end of the filament guide tube there. This one on the left side or on the right side and uh, the other one will go into the other side. And you just feed that all the way up. Uh, I find it easier to sort of feed it from the bottom as you just turn the spool until it comes out the other end of the filament guide tube. Let's put the other nut on the outside here to prevent this from coming off. Some of these spools have a wider opening so that you don't even need to take those off when you're mounting these spools, which is actually a nice convenience with the Bumat, yet it still has a, a, a lip there so that it will not slide off. So that makes it real nice and easy to work with. I'm going to go ahead and put on another spool. Let's try some orange here. This is again ABS. And we're just going to attach that the same way and then feed it up through the filament guide tube. All right, so now we're going to attach our two cables in the back. We've got our power cord and our USB cable. The uh, power is going to be needed in order to finish up the filament loading process, as you'll see momentarily. 
The power plugs right in the back here underneath the right hand spool if you're looking at it from the back as we are. And just plug this in right there. Remember we've already switched our voltage over to the US voltage in my case so be sure you do that if necessary first. And I'm not going to connect it to power just yet because I'll be flipping this around in a moment. The USB cable, that connector is right over here under the left hand spool. So again, I am not connecting the other end to anything just yet. We're just going to leave that over there at the side for now. Okay, we now have our printer connected to power. Going to go ahead and flip the power switch on in the back. And you'll see it go through the startup sequence, which only takes a few moments. And as you can see, we're now at the main menu and got a few options here. For our current purposes, we want to use the preheat utility to warm up our extruders so that we can then go ahead and load filament. So we'll use the control pad over here, use the down arrow, and you'll see the little caret symbol over there indicates your current selection. Middle button that says OK to select preheat. Now you'll notice on this screen the default is right tool is on, left tool is on, platform is off. And that is exactly what we want here. If yours happens to be different, you want to scroll down using the arrows and you can push the middle button to toggle any one of these off or on. For current uh, purposes, loading the filament, we want both extruders to be heated up, but we don't need the platform heated up. So once you have those set this way, go ahead and select Start Preheat at the top. And you will now see a status screen showing the preheating process. Now it is able to preheat both extruders at the same time, which it's doing now. If we were preheating the build plate as well, it would preheat the build plate first and then move on to the extruders, which takes a little longer. That's actually one benefit of upgrading to the Sailfish firmware, which we'll cover later. Uh, one of the things that enables is it, it lets you heat up everything at once, so it makes that process quicker. All right, so now that our extruders are heated up, we're going to go ahead and load our filament. First thing you'll want to do is just trim the end a little bit. If there's, sometimes there's a part that's, that's bent because of how it was loaded on the spool or something like that. So we'll just use some clippers and trim off any imperfections from the end so that we have a nice clean part to feed in there. I'm going to go ahead and start the load right function from the menu. So we can use the left arrow to go back to the main menu. Now I want to go down to the utilities option and select that with the OK button, and then go down to Change Filament, press OK, and now we're going to use Load Right and then Load Left to load each of the extruders one at a time. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and press Load Right here, and then we'll shift the view so you can see what's happening from, from the top. And now we're just going to feed our right-hand filament into the right-hand extruder. And as you put it in there, you'll feel it get grabbed by the gear motors inside and it's going to start feeding that filament through. As soon as you feel that, that it's been caught and it's being pulled in, you can go ahead and insert the filament guide tube into the slot on top and make sure that it seats in there by a few millimeters so that it's snugly uh, attached and won't come undone while it's moving around. You'll notice that the plastic is starting to come out the bottom of the extruder. And as soon as you see that it's coming out, you can, you can stop it after you've had that for a few seconds. Okay, now we're going to do the left filament. So I'll select Load Left from the menu. Same process. I'm just going to trim a little bit off the end to make sure I have a nice clean end to feed in. We'll then feed that end right into the left-hand hole on the top of the extruders. I can already feel that it's been grabbed and it's being slowly pulled in. And at that point, I can insert the filament guide tube, again, making sure that it goes in a few millimeters and is nice and snugly seated. I see the filament already coming out on the left-hand extruder now. I'll give it just a couple of seconds, and then I can stop that. And at this point, both the left and the right extruders are loaded and ready to go. Okay, so now we're going to level our build plate. And this is a very important part of the process because getting this right is going to make the difference between good prints and failed prints. The reason for that has to do with the way the first layer of your print sticks to the bed 
and having the bed perfectly level is going to ensure that your prints stick well and that's going to save lots of headaches and frustration. So to do this we're going to use a built-in utility. So on the menu we're going to go down to utilities, middle button to select, go down to level build plate, middle button to select, and it's going to go ahead and move the extruders into the home position towards the back, get them out of our way, and it's now going to raise the build plate all the way up and then it will give us some instructions on screen which we can follow along with. And now what it wants us to do, and it's telling us this on the screen, is to find the four knobs on the bottom of the build plate and, and adjust those, tighten them four or five turns. And the reason it's having us do this is to make sure that the build plate isn't too high such that when the uh, nozzles get moved into position we don't want them to, make, to hit the plate. So they're just having us lower the plate down a bit before we start this process. Now, uh, the firmware hasn't really been updated uh, yet because the Creator X actually has uh, three adjustment knobs instead of four. That's one of the things that they improved to help make it easier when you adjust the build plate. They just haven't upgraded the firmware to reflect that in the text yet, but uh, don't let that confuse you. I'll show you how it works on, on this model. Okay, so now we're giving you a nice close-up view here. It has moved the uh, nozzles into a center forward position. So it's right near the front of the build plate. And what we want to do now is, just as instructed, take a sheet of paper and use this to check our thickness. We should be able to slide the paper easily under the nozzle. And this is not sliding easily, so that means that I need to adjust it down a little bit meaning tighten the knobs a little more, because if you're tightening it, that's pulling the plate down, which is widening that gap. So I'm going to turn both of these front knobs to tighten a little, and give myself a little more height. Okay, now it slides easily underneath. Now what you want is you want this paper to be able to slide easily, but you want to be able to feel a little bit of friction between the nozzle and the plate. So you should feel just a little bit of pull but not enough that it's going to make an indentation or scratch the paper. So I'm going to, to adjust this just a little bit back the other way to bring the nozzles a bit closer to the bed and just sort of check this as you go by sliding the paper back and forth. That's, now I'm feeling a little bit of tension there, which is just what you want. So as you can see, I, it, the paper is just enough tension to cause the paper to bend, but not enough that I can't easily slide it through. So, that's about what you want. Now I'm going to push the OK button to move on to the next step. Okay, now it's moved to the second position, the rear center of the plate. We're going to repeat the process. Again, it says on the screen to adjust the two back knobs. We only have one to worry about, so go ahead and check it with our paper, but I think that's going to need to be, yeah, that needs to be raised a little bit. There is no connection now. So, the rear knob, we want to Let's see, we want this build plate to go up, so I want to turn it this way. A few turns should do it to begin with. Slide the paper in there to check it. And now it's not sliding through, so I'm going to go back the other way a little bit. There we go. Okay, so now the paper is underneath, and again, I'm going to just now adjust it as I'm moving the paper until I get just the right amount of tension. Okay, so now I feel it tugging on the paper a bit, but not too much. I can just feel it rubbing. That's about where we want it. Now we'll push OK to go to the next step. Okay, now we are in position three, which is over to the right side of the build plate. So we are going to again uh, use the same process, the sheet of paper, but this time we will only be adjusting the knob on the right side. And that feels a little bit tight, so I'm going to adjust it, tightening the screw, which again pulls the build plate down towards the screw, and that's going to give us more room. Okay, now I can feel just a little bit of tension on the paper. I'm going to go up just a touch. Too much. It's very sensitive. Once you get it into the right position, you're turning this knob by just a, a hair's breadth, 
and a very fine tune adjustment is needed. That's about the right amount of tension there. Again, you can feel it just pulling a little bit on the paper, but not too much. Okay to move to the next step. All right, we are now in the fourth position, which is over on the left side of the build plate. Same process, sheet of paper, and we'll use the left hand adjustment knob to fine tune this. We need to raise the plate there a little bit on the left. Oh, it's very close. Just a little fine tuning. And that feels pretty good. Okay, okay button to proceed. Okay, and now it has moved back to the center position for a final check. Just going to slide our paper in there. And that feels really nice, as it should. Push OK. And that is the end of the leveling process. All right, so now we've got our printer all set up and ready to go. Before we do our first test prints, let's just cover a couple of quick safety guidelines. Common sense goes a long way here, so just be careful, but it is a 3D printer, so you're dealing with some high temperatures, especially around the extruder nozzles and the heated build plate. So be careful, make sure things are cooled off before you touch them, and adult supervision is always recommended for these. You wanna be a little bit careful about static electricity, so you should probably ground yourself on something before working on the printer. And we would suggest not using gloves, uh, though it might seem like it would be safer. Actually, because you have all these moving parts, it's possible for the gloves to get caught up into something entangled. So we recommend not using gloves. You want to keep the printer in a pretty well-ventilated room, uh, but not somewhere where there's going to be a lot of cool drafts, because that can negatively affect your prints. There is going to be some sound produced by this printer. It's not very loud, but you can hear it. So you might want to have this in an area where it won't bother anyone if it's running overnight or for hours on end during the day. I think that covers the basics, so let's move on. Okay, so just a couple of quick environmental considerations before you determine where to set up your printer. Ideally, you want this to be in a warm temperature controlled room. The best temperature, especially when you're dealing with ABS printing, is going to be somewhere around 80 degrees Fahrenheit, sort of in the 26, 27 degrees Celsius range. And uh, so we keep this in an enclosed office with our air conditioning vents covered up, and that keeps it just about the right temperature. We thought of putting things in the basement one time, but that's going to be a little bit too cool and not stable enough, so you want to think carefully about where you put your 3D printer. You also want to make sure there's not cool drafts blowing through. You don't want open windows or anything like that, because that can cause cracking or warping, especially with ABS. Now, if you're printing with PLA, you do want active cooling, but you'll do that using fans that you can mount either on the extruder assembly or desktop fans that you can just place nearby to blow on the print as it's coming out. I think that's the basics in terms of environmentals, so let's move on. Okay, so now we've leveled our build plate and we are ready to do our first test print. Uh, now we want to make sure that we have a really good clean surface to print on. That helps with uh, first layer adhesion. So I have some 99% isopropyl alcohol here and we're just going to put that onto the bed using a paper towel or a soft cloth. And just use that to clean the top of that print bed really well. What happens is while you're doing the initial adjustment and leveling the build plate, you end up touching that uh, Kapton tape and we have oils in our skin that come off and that will interfere with our print. Okay. Now we should have a good clean surface. You want to do that every once in a while when you're getting your uh, new print set up. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and do our first test print here. We've already uh, leveled the build plate and we've got a nice clean surface now. Uh, I went ahead and took the liberty of copying a file onto the SD card that's a little bit more of an interesting print than what comes with it. And I'm going to show how that works later. But for now, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and put the SD card in here. And then from the menu, I can just select Build from SD. And I'm going to choose my print job, which I called ABS Bird in Cage. Some of you may have seen this. It's a little tiny bird inside of a bird cage. 
And uh, the, the objects that are preloaded on the card are essentially uh, test cubes, but they're fairly large and they take a while to print actually. So this, this should be a little bit of a quicker and more interesting demo. So I'm going to start the job up and then I'll switch lenses to show you this first layer up real close so that you can see what's happening because that's, that's critical to watch closely. Okay, so now we're starting our job and the first thing you'll see is it's moving the extruders to the home position, which is that far back right position. And now it's lifting the build plate into position. And then it's going to move the extruder, extruders back into the front left corner, which is the starting position. Now at that point it would normally sit there as it preheats. In our case it was already warmed up and it is now extruding a line of filament across the front. Now this you will not see in your first test print. That's actually something that I put in and uh, may show you a little later under the advanced setup. But now it is starting the print. As you can see, it's doing a couple of outside rings. That's called the skirt. And that uh, just helps to further clean out the extruder, get ready for the print. Now it is starting in on the actual first layer of the object. This is, as I said, a bird in a cage, so it's doing a sort of a circular layer on the bottom, and it's going to build up from there. I'm going to move us in closer here. As you can see, we're proceeding along, building up layer by layer. It's a few layers in already. Okay, so there we have our first successful print on our brand new FlashForge Creator X. This one took uh, about 30 minutes to complete. I was very conservative with the print speed. Uh, this one I set up for about 65 millimeters per second. Uh, I normally print at about 85 millimeters per second, but you know that varies based on personal preference. You know, it's a balance between speed and quality, and uh, it varies based on the kind of object you're printing. So we'll talk more about that later. Now, to remove a print from the bed, Especially when you're printing on Kapton tape, you want to be very careful. Uh, Kapton tape is extremely easy to tear and uh, to avoid having to replace that frequently, you want to be very cautious about how you remove prints. Now, the safest way to remove a print is to allow the bed to cool down fully and as it cools, that plastic contracts just a tiny bit enough to pop it right off the bed or at least make it very easy to remove. I, uh, being a little bit less patient, tend to uh, do it another way, which is to use a a flat edge uh, paint scraper type tool, but again in this case you have to be very careful with how you do this so that you don't scratch your Kapton tape. And as you can see I just had to barely nudge it and it came right off there. And that is our first successful print. As you can see it's a little tiny bird inside a bird cage. And given the size, as you can see from my fingers here, that's a pretty small print, it uh, did a pretty nice job. This is not done at the highest quality settings. This was done at 0.2 millimeter layer height, which is pretty average, sort of a medium resolution. This printer can go at least twice that high in resolution, and uh, that's all configurable through the software, which I'll show you soon. And there we have it. That's our first successful print. Uh, pretty much right out of the box. We took the printer out, set it up, leveled the build plate after mounting the extruder, and uh, ran a test print, and it came out really nicely. So uh, pretty good for a first time setup. We're now going to move on to the software side of things to show you how to set that up. Mm -hmm. 